Writing at approximately the same time as Kranz, Carl Philipp Emanuel Bach and Leopold Mozart take a rather stricter view on the application of embellishments. For Bach, embellishments such as those recommended by Kranz were already becoming a little old-fashioned by 1753 when Bach wrote his own treatise on keyboard playing. Added to which, Bach felt that these ornaments were not infrequently excessive and inappropriate to the music of his own time. Leopold Mozart, writing in his Tutor for the Violin, first published in 1756, was even more frugal than Bach in his approach. Embellishments of the Kranz variety are hardly discussed at all, and even then restricted to solo playing. For Leopold, the important thing is to be able to read the notated score for its coded messages, knowing where the composer intends ornamentation and to apply it judiciously in such places, and, just as important, where not to, where to leave well alone. An example that Leopold gives us. It's incorrect to add upper note appoggiaturas in places where the main harmony note is already preceded by an appoggiatura, thus detracting from the dissonant effect already crafted by the composer. A good example of this from the slow movement of K570 occurs in bar 23. I'll play this firstly as Mozart notated it, and secondly with added embellished appoggiaturas in those places where Mozart has already written in an appoggiatura, giving an illustration of the kind of inappropriate effect Leopold Mozart refers to. If Immanuel Bach felt that much embellishment as practised in his own day was either out of date, out of place, or lacking in refinement, then specifically composed varied repeats was something else entirely. In Bach's six sonatas for keyboard with varied repeats, published in Berlin in 1760, he gives extended notated examples of the art of recomposing an entire section when it's repeated not simply formulaic fragmentations of the original melody into smaller note values, but a wholesale reshaping of the original contour while preserving its underlying harmonic frame. This practice offers significant potential for performers of Mozart sonatas. Adopting Bach's practice of varied repeats in Mozart sonatas is not just historically appropriate, it can also be a valuable tool for understanding them. When we intervene in a compositional way, when we repeat a first movement exposition, we engage creatively, of course, with Mozart's original notated text, leaving behind also a commentary on its features, a trace of our understanding of its content and the underlying principles of its organisation.
In that version, tending more towards recomposition than straightforward embellishment, I bore in mind certain ground rules. For instance, retaining Mozart's harmonic outline, retaining the phrase lengths and phrase structures. For instance, the opening in the repeat retained four bars of unchanging tonic harmony, then two pairs of two-bar alternations of dominant and tonic, giving 12 bars altogether. However, the particular melodic, rhythmic, and even textual profile departed somewhat from Mozart's notated original, as indeed Mozart himself departs from the original plain thematic statements in his own sets of fully notated variations. There were even one or two minor deviations from the precise harmonic contour, though these made good sense in grammatical and harmonic terms underpinning the basic outline.